Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 16, brought to you by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Hi everybody, welcome to ServiceNow Knowledge. This is Knowledge 16, no, hashtag no 16. We're here in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Jeff feels like our second home. It is CUBE <laughs> season and uh, conference season. Uh, this is day one, actually, of our coverage, really day two of the conference. It kicked off yesterday uh, with a lot of the technical sessions, but the keynotes started today in the general sessions. We heard Frank Slootman um, laying out the vision of service. Now, yesterday I happened to sit in the financial analyst meeting. This is a billion dollar company. Uh, they surpassed a billion dollars last year. It grew in excess of 60%. They're on track, in my view, uh, to do a billion and a half this year. ServiceNow has laid out a vision by 2020 of it being a $4 billion company. So, Jeff, we've been covering ServiceNow since the early days when they were a relatively small company with large ambitions, and they've been executing nearly flawlessly on the vision that they set out, and they continue to expand that vision, expand the total available market, bring out new products, bring on acquisitions. Uh, but the real story of ServiceNow is around the customers. The core customers, what Slootman calls our peeps, uh, the, the IT folks within the, you know, the heart of IT, bringing service management discipline, not only to IT, but throughout the organization. The other big vector of, of stories at any knowledge conference, of course, is the founder, Fred Luddy, and his core team, the team of innovators that we were in the keynotes today. I swear, Fred Luddy was coding <laughs> on his laptop. He loves to code. The guy's a programmer by heart. Uh, but you're seeing things like elegant design. We saw the announcement of a, of a ServiceNow smartwatch today, a wearable device, so you could basically an enterprise you know, system to predict, to be informed, to take your favorite KPIs and bring them right to your wrist. So Jeff, it's kind of more of the same, just bigger and badder this year. And they just keep clipping along, right? It's just like you said, it's an execution game. I talked to Chris Pope a little bit in the hallways this morning uh, during breakfast, and he said kind of, what's the magic? And it, it just gets stuff done, right? People can just get their job done uh, using ServiceNow, and, and as you said, Frank loves to talk about the IT pros as their peeps, but he made an interesting comment in the keynote that there's a lot more IT function, uh, discipline, uh, execution outside of the core IT team um, structure, so that obviously bodes really well for, for ServiceNow. But it, again, we've, like you said, Dave, this is our fourth year here, we run into the same customers uh, every year, the passion keeps growing, and then, and then you know, the other thing I think is interesting, looking at the little service providers um, that are no longer little service providers, Cloud Sherpas and Fruition Partners, both now part of Accenture and CSC. So when you see the big E&Ys here, Service integrators, they don't make a play unless they see a really big opportunity. Yeah, they like to eat from the trough, as it, as it were, and so the trough is getting larger. But I remember, Jeff, the first uh, ServiceNow Knowledge, we went to Knowledge uh, 13, which was here in Vegas, uh, one of the smaller hotels, I think right. it was at the Aria. And we walked the floor that time, and we were sort of asking ourselves, well, where is Accenture? You know, where are the big SIs? And we, we saw a Cloud Sherpa, Sherpas uh, and, and companies like Fruition, who had a big presence there, both of those companies were acquired. Accenture acquired Cloud Sherpas. Uh, uh, CSC acquired uh, Fruition. Uh, the other thing uh, I want to point out for those of you who may not be as familiar with ServiceNow, the company started with this sort of help desk you know, mentality, really try to automate and improve on, on help desk. Frank Slootman said years ago, he said at one of these conferences, desk is a four letter word, and, and he got some booze because people are hanging on to their help desk. But it started with a relatively sort of legacy, attacking a legacy business. Uh, you know, back then, Gartner Group was talking about how this is you know, the, the end of that business, it's kind of going to go away. And you know, Slootman came in and, and really was the right guy for the job, helped energize you know, the vision that was set forth in the early days by Fred Luddy. But what you've seen consistently is the company has expanded its total available market, going from you know, problem man management, change management, help desk, et cetera, expanding that out into IT service management, uh, IT operations management, now bringing service management across other parts of the enterprise. What ServiceNow laid out today in the general session was essentially you had the, f the, the first software estate, was ERP, and that was brought to fore by the likes of Oracle and, and of course SAP. And then the next great estate, we're skipping over some estates, we're sort of fast forwarding to you know, the open systems world, but the second great estate 
was really that brought on by CRM and, and won by Salesforce. And what you're seeing ServiceNow is positioning is service management across the enterprise for everything in between back office operations and the sales and customer engagement, like facilities, HR, but touching upon sales and marketing and uh, some of the back office stuff. So they are laying out a vision of the third great estate, which is ServiceNow, everything is a service, enterprise services, service management, where IT is the backbone of all of those operations. And Jeff, we're seeing that. I mean, IT, we've talked for years, IT touches every part of the organization, but increasingly, companies are becoming cloudified and sassified across the enterprise, and that's really a, a tailwind for ServiceNow. Yeah, it's a theme we talk about over and over. Every company has to be an IT company. It's just what uh, services or products do they wrap their IT around? So important for uh, competitive advantage. And I go back, Dave, to, the, to the, our, our, our day at the ARIA, a couple days at the ARIA, and I re-watched our interview with, with uh, Fred, uh, on our day two interview. We did a couple with him, and he talks about the story of this platform vision that he had from day one, and talking about the, to the initial investors, and they said, well, what does it do? Well, it does everything. Well, what do you want it to do? And, and really, you know, kind of a classic platform application play where then he you know, built the application around a very specific use case and go to market, and now you're seeing that vision that he had back then as the platform capabilities expand um, to do so much more. And the other thing I remember from that, that interview with him was talking about the copy room and all the papers, the different color papers in the copy room. I need a vacation, I need a new laptop, I need to do this thing. And really enabling everyone to build those little processes uh, that we're all encumbered by over and over again using this platform. Yeah, so I remember, again, going back to the early days, we had walked the floor in the early Knowledge 13 days and said, wow, look at all these companies in the ecosystem. Watch, that's the key to this is watching the ecosystem grow and specifically trying to understand which of those companies in the ecosystem ServiceNow was going to acquire. I remember we had asked uh, Fred about acquisitions and do they have to fit in? Do they have to be already running on the ServiceNow platform? And he said, well, that's kind of interesting. Uh, and what we've seen now is, and he didn't really answer the question back then, but what we've seen, because he didn't want to show his cards, what we've seen is when ServiceNow makes an acquisition, uh, like they did with, with, with ITAP uh, and some others, they, they brought in you know, ServiceWatch with another company, they, they purchased a GRC capability. They completely re-platform the company, the software, into ServiceNow, same UX, using the CMDB, uh, 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 the, the, the CMDB uh, using the same user uh, interface, everything is the same experience. So that's, that's huge. Now, I want to dig into that a little bit and see how much, how does ServiceNow do that so quickly? I mean, because basically it's taken, I don't know, a year to replatform these, maybe nine months, 12 months, 14 months, but it's not the, the nine years that we see with, for instance, Oracle Fusion, which is sort of everything rewritten in Java. So, it's going to be really interesting to see that. What else, Jeff, should we be looking for? The other piece of that, that I picked up from Frank in the keynote was really kind of a, the different uh, engagement models. He, he specifically contrasted CRM versus a, a service management approach. And you know, you take care of the problem. He keeps going back to the I've fallen and I can't get up use case <laughs> over and over. So I'm not, that, it's kind of funny. But, but he yeah. takes it to the next level within a service management, which is to do the analysis and to do the root cause analysis so that you don't have these things repeating over and over. So it's a very different way to kind of approach customer engagement. I look forward to kind of digging a little bit deeper with Frank on that. Great, all right, keep it right there everybody. We got wall to wall coverage, three days of coverage from Knowledge16. Check out, uh, well the hashtag is no16. Check out crowdchat.net slash no16. We've got uh, Bert Lattimore documenting the CUBE interviews in there. Keep right there, everybody. We'll be right back after this brief word. It's always fun to come back to theCUBE because 